So I think you guys want to all approve that you're we're recording it, and then we'll go ahead and get started. You say got it? Okay. Good morning. Welcome to the Dortrans annual meeting. Um, Dortran is a creative community network dedicated to connecting people to transportation services that are affordable, available, and accessible. So again, thank you for all coming today. Um, for those of you who do not know me, I am Nikki Voigt. I have been with Dortran for nearly 11 years. I began as the program coordinator for the loan and uh, vehicle repair purchase and loan program. I then started with the half price taxi vouchers, half price gas vouchers, and vehicle repair grants, which were added to my list of responsibilities throughout the years. In 2020, I accepted the role as executive director. There has been a great learning curve and I'm grateful for all of the experiences I had going into this position. At uh, this time, I'm gonna introduce the board of directors who might be on this call. When you hear your name, please wave so those in attendance can put a face with the name. We have President Kathy Wagner, Interim Vice President Marty Olenichak, Treasurer Nancy Doust, Secretary Pam Bush, who I believe is probably on a phone, uh, <laughs> Directors Aaron LeClaire, Betsy Bayer, Candace Dart, Ellen Graff, Jeremy Pazkacek, Louise Hausen, Paula Weiss, and Tia Belisle. I would also like to take the time to introduce staff who you'll hear more from shortly. I have Kim Gilson here in the office. She's our volunteer coordinator. 2021 proved to be just as challenging as 2020. However, she had a year of pandemic experience under her belt. Kim is tasked with finding a volunteer as close to the rider as possible to keep expenses down and do it without sharing rides due to the pandemic, at least for a little while yet. She has never had to turn down a ride thanks to her amazing volunteers and the program flexibility. She builds a lot of great relationships with those drivers. They come in here, um, tell her what's going on out on the road and, and keeps uh, an eye on what's going on there. So I said, she does a fantastic job talking with the clients and drivers to ensure program satisfaction and safety for everyone. Um, Kim just returned from vacation. I have to say the office truly missed her. She handles her job with such grace. Yvonne LaCrosse joined us in May of last year as our office assistant. She is the front line on the phones and has taken over most of the programs I previously managed. She assists with separation of financial duties. And her position has allowed me to focus on getting ahead of the eight ball rather than behind. She has been a wonderful addition to the door trans staff and has learned there is so much more to transportation that meets the eye. I think I, like most, believe the pandemic would be behind us sooner than later. We have managed to keep our doors open during the entire time. Kim was able to offer our volunteers some of the first vaccines available in Door County because of the critical work they are doing for our community. We applied for and received money from the Community Foundation to be prepared to work from home again if necessary and continue to offer free transportation to folks to get their COVID vaccinations and contactless nutritional deliveries should they need that. Dortran was able to start the Transportation Resource Improvement Partners meetings back up, that's known as TRIP, um, up in a virtual fashion. Uh, the ability to get together and share transportation ideas and needs is powerful. We will continue to meet as needed. Anyone interested in joining that group can contact me at Dortran 743-9999. I always bring up the fact that when I started, I had no idea the many transportation barriers that our friends and neighbors faced. That awareness of me personally not knowing is an echo of sentiments we hear almost daily. There are still so many people that do not know that these valuable services exist and do not know how they can help. We need everyone advocating on our behalf to help get people where they need to go. This could mean spreading the word about transportation, volunteering, or supporting us monetarily. I point it out at every opportunity that I can because many of you may not have thought about it either. I'm going to turn it over to Kathy Wagner, our president, for her presentation. <clears throat> well, welcome, as Nikki said, and I am truly hopeful that next year we will be able to meet in person again. This literally struck me this morning of three years of not being in person. 
um, has been tough. So I really don't have a lot to offer to you, except um, I'm just I'm so impressed by Nikki, Yvonne, and Kim, the work that they do and the way they handle the office. I have been in the office many times when people come in and um, just feel free to sit down and have a chat with um, the office staff. And they are a very impressive group of people with excellent customer service standards and the love of what they do. It's the reason that allows them to do what they do because they're passionate. So about the board, we are about ready to complete a timeline for strategic planning for the next three years. It's taken us a few months to do this, but we finally got on track. We're stepping out in our marketing and fundraising. We've welcomed some new board members and we know it takes a bit of time for new members to come up to speed with programs and regulations. I'm still learning what some of the numbers mean. On behalf of the board, we welcome your attendance and interest in providing transportation to the county. Please help us spread the word. You are the way we get referrals. You are our business card. Thank you for attending this Zoom. Now I'm gonna give you the financial highlights from 2021. Our income comes from various sources, including federal and state grants, annual fundraising event, various grants, private donations, and income designated to the many programs that have now become part of DoorTran. In 2021, our income was $259,225.87. Our expenses include dollars on the programs that are part of DoorTran, dollars invested in savings and costs associated with running the business, obviously including the staff and the costs of what the IRS considers our program and services. Items in this category include the expense for the Peninsula Transit Coalition that we collaborate with as the fiscal agent and staff time spent attending various meetings within our community and around the state for continuing education, networking, and training. Nikki, Kim, and Yvonne spend their time working with clients to find the most affordable, available, and accessible transportation options, either within DoorTran programs or referrals to partner agencies. Excuse me. They continue to track the unmet transportation needs of the community to research and bring in additional services as needed. Our expenses in 2021 were $246,616.76. We transferred $125,000 out of our checking and into the money market during 2021. We ended with a balance of $191,634 and 44 cents in the money market and $47,749.52 in the Door County Community Foundation Operating Fund. It is important that we keep a reserve pool of funds as WSDOT is a reimbursable matching grant. DoorTran does not receive first or second quarter reimbursements until well into the third quarter. Rural transportation grants continue to grow in popularity and available funds are down from years past. For instance, our operating grant was approved at just 50.9% of the budget submitted to run that program. If you would like a detailed breakdown of the income and expenses, we can get a copy of the P&L for you. Just contact DoorTran at 920-743-9999. Hawk, Hawkins Ash CPAs is contracted by Dortran to do an annual financial review of our books. If anyone is interested in receiving a copy of our financial review, please contact Nikki at the Dortran office. We hope that sometime this summer, the financial review will be available on our website, usually about July or August. Thank you. Kim? Actually, we had a little flip-flop in here today and we're going to put Yvonne on the spot next. Sorry. Yes. That's okay. That's okay. Hello. Uh, before I get into the details of our loan and voucher program, I would like to introduce you to one of our loan clients who just last month finished paying off her loan and was very excited to do so. She is here to talk to us today about what the loan program means to her and her family. I now introduce you all to Beth. Switch chairs. Oh. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Beth. Um, I wrote something down just so I wouldn't 
Babylon forever. Um, but <clears throat> I'm truly grateful for Nikki and the amazing women um, at Dortran. After my divorce and trying to get my finances in order, I needed a reliable vehicle. Dortran was a blessing. Um, I was able to get a loan through them and get a vehicle that is now mine. Thank you. You know, thank you so much. I appreciate Dortran and everything they did um, and give me the confidence to get back on my feet. And it was and something that I've never owned before. And I finally owned my vehicle. So it's it's a really amazing program. And the ladies that work here, really amazing also. So thank you. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Beth. <laughs> you can go ahead and go if you need to get to work. Thank you, Beth. The stories are much more impactful than the statistics. However, our program stats for 2021 did not disappoint. We successfully loaned money to four households through our purchase and or repair loan programs. Our grant program assisted five households averaging $435 each and saved our clients over $2,150. We served 126 new travel voucher clients and provided 2,120 rides through that program, saving our community members over $13,400. Our gas voucher program tracked 84 rides in 2021. Once again, we fielded over 5,000 phone calls, totaling 17,726 minutes, or nearly 37 business days. Additionally, with technology becoming increasingly popular, we fielded several thousand emails, texts, and Facebook messages, along with serving our countless walk-in clients as well. At this time, I would like to turn the mic over to Louise Hausen. She is the. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> over the camera. Again, we switched things around. Sorry, everybody. That's my fault. <laughs> Good morning. So, I have some information to share about the volunteer driver programs. And if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to ever ask or jump in. Um, starting with the veteran volunteer transportation program in 2021, we provided 84 one-way rides, 3,821 miles and 150 hours that were covered by the volunteers. Um, so since we started this in February of 2011, we have now done more than 2,240 trips for our county's veterans. In the countywide transportation program, we've already exceeded 7,400 rides since July of 2012. Um, just 1,021 of those rides were done in 2021, traveling 40,400 miles and it's 1,700 hours that were put in. Three of our drivers, Jim Connup, Howie Phipps, and Mike Skippon, account for one third of those hours. And as much fun as numbers are in showing that we are filling the needs of many, um, like Yvonne said, and like Nikki said, they do not reflect the whole story and the reality of what 2021 was. We are no longer in lockdown, but still very much in a pandemic. We are still following regulations for masking and individual riders. It was a year where we started to see the numbers of riders starting to climb. In 2020, we started a new program through permission from the transportation grants that we had already secured and were able to begin a riderless transport program that allowed us, allowed us to do contactless food delivery for those receiving food from the local pantries, farmers to families, and YMCA meals. In 2021, we also received a grant from Door County Community Foundation that allowed us to continue this and support trips for riders getting to their COVID vaccinations. I'm happy to say that our plan for office hours in Sister Bay has become a reality. We now are able to meet with drivers, riders, and interested folks at the NWTC campus in Sister Bay. Either a representative or I am there on the third Wednesday of the month. Some other great news is our pool of drivers is starting to grow again, and we're now back up to 40 drivers. We could always use more, but I'm hopeful that as things continue to open up and people get out, we will have more people comfortable with giving those rides. And here to tell some of the stories, um, we're going to start with Diane. Hi, 
Um, I'm Diane, and I moved to Ellison Bay two years ago in December, just before COVID hit. So those of you who've driven me someplace, if I'm chatty, that's why. <laughs> it's like I went from winter lockdown to COVID lockdown, and so I'm still waiting to be fully comfortable going out and just getting together with people. Um, the, oh, the, I'm so glad I found Dortran and the drivers are friendly. They're fun to talk to. And I consider them friends, people in the office too, that, you know, I'm now putting a face to a voice, which is cool. Um, I have a lot of severe spinal issues and it's painful for me to drive distances. I can't fidget. I, I'm kind of locked into that driver's seat and that's it. And I can't really move around much. So it, it does cause a problem. And my car is 20 years old. And I do get worried if I would have to go a distance like to Green Bay, even to Sturgeon, and it breaks down. Um, I have doctor's appointments in Sturgeon and Green Bay. Somehow this all happened since I moved up here. I wasn't in the habit of going to doctors all the time. But um, sometimes we make a stop or two while we're in the big city, which is cool. And uh, I really appreciate that, especially if we stop at Uncle Mike's in Green Bay. Always a good thing. <laughs> and uh, there are lots of things you can't buy in Northern Door. And so if it's a, not a problem with the driver, we stop. If it's, you know, if they don't want to, okay, that's all right. Um, Kathy, Michelle, and John, I know, that I know them the best. I love the stories you tell. I also love learning local Door County history, which I don't know much of. I came from Illinois and I was steeped in local history there, but it's not helping me here. And uh, I really do. Oh, I, I appreciate you guys so much. I just bless you all for being here and willing to drive. Um, I truly don't know what I'd do without you. And thank you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Glad we could help. Um, we also have uh, some video clip and Nikki's going to play that for us here in just a second. We're, we're going to try to share our screen, but okay. this goes back to that. Uh, we got to be smarter than the machine. Mm -hmm. You guys see the video? It's loading. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nikki, this is Amy, and maybe it's just me, but I'm not seeing or hearing anything. This is Louise. I, I can't either. Me either. Um, okay. Are you guys seeing it now? Yes. 32. Yes. Yep, there we go. It's not moving yet, but we can see it. Okay. There we go. Almost. Well, that was the end of his. So let me get up another ah, one okay. and see. Let me see if I can get up the next one. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys. That's okay.
Are you seeing it now, you guys? No. no. We're seeing your USB drive E screen. Are you seeing anything now, you guys? Yeah, but no volume. Oh. Video is hard sometimes when you're sharing. All right, I think we're gonna just quit the stop sharing because it's not working. We're watching them on this end and you guys aren't seeing anything on that end. So I do apologize for that. We're Tell us see about it, Nikki. I can do a little bit. I can, I can do a little bit. Um, Gene, the first writer that was talking, for those of you who could see him, Gene is in a wheelchair. And his friend of a long time, um, his lady friend, as he describes her, ended up in a nursing home over in Kiwani. So we would take him to go visit her every two weeks or so. And his big comments were, you know, how happy he was. And we never declined a ride for him. We always made sure he went. And in all honesty, he made it easy because he'd say, I want to go next week. I could go Wednesday. I could go Thursday. I could go Friday. You tell me what day. And we would let him know when we had a driver available. And um, he was able to self-transfer. So because we don't do wheelchair transport, he, you know, they have to transfer themselves. But he was able to do that. And we were able to get him to visit his friend, um, happy to say, even with lockdown, they opened the doors to the nursing home just before her birthday, the week before her birthday. So he got to see her for that. Um, and then they locked down again. <laughs> but it was it was nice that he was able to spend some some very important final days with her. Um, the other person that we took um, that was in the videos, her name is Pat. Um, she does live up north. And Although door to door might have been an option for some of her appointments, it wasn't something that she could afford to do with it being $10 down and $10 back up. Several of her appointments were before a door to door driver, which is our public transportation system that we absolutely <laughs> love. So it's just their limited hours up north. Um, so she ended up riding with us for several trips. And she was very grateful for that because it was just something with where she lives between the timing and the financials. It just wasn't something that worked for her. So we were able to step in and take care of that. Um, the third video clip that we had was John Fletcher. He's one of our drivers. He came on a few years ago. Um, it was something that... Um, Kudos to Kathy. She had talked about it at her church and said, hey, we need some drivers. And two gentlemen signed up and I used them so much those first two months. They probably were wondering what they were getting themselves into. Um, and then things slowed down a little bit. It just, it just, they couldn't have signed on at a better time. And John's big deal was, um, you know, I'm retired every day is a weekend, so why not? Um, he prefers the trips that are just in the county, so we don't have as many of those, but I can call him on short notice and I can get him in the off, I can, you know, get him off and on the road with people. So that's the important part. So, um, and, and he's just happy to do it. He'll, he'll jump in anytime he can. Um, so I'm just going to kind of close up with, if you don't already know this, I want each of you to understand that we don't say no folk, to folks that call for a ride. Um, this isn't thanks to our drivers. They have covered every single trip that has been requested of them. They always come through and take care of the folks that need them. And without their dedication and support, Georgian couldn't be successful. So we're very thankful to all of them. So. Now, at this time, we are going to turn the mic over to Louise Housen. Hi, everybody. My name is Louise Housen. I'm the community coordinator in Sister Bay. I also serve on the, on the board for DoorTram. And I'm here to give you a brief history of the Peninsula Transit Coalition 
and um, how we got started very briefly and a little bit about what happened last year and what our plans are for this year. So the Peninsula Transit Coalition was established in 2019 as a grassroots organization that was formed to explore county a countywide transportation system. So this would be a fixed route, essentially bus, um, bus service that would, would, that would be provided throughout the county from all the way from Southern Door up to, uh, up to Northern Door to, uh, up to Gills Rock. Um, so that was established, we were established in 2019. Um, and shortly after that in 2020, we formed a partnership with Dortran. And uh, we are very grateful for that partnership and um, having them become our fiscal agent. Through Dortran, we will able to receive a $2,500 grant from the Door Community Foundation, which enabled us to fund um, the, um, a, a, a study of the transportation needs and, their, and also a transportation routes that would be, that would be most benefit um, uh, the Door County communities. So um, subsequent to that, I um, went to, I think it was every, um, every municipal board in, um, in Door County and presented to them essentially what, what the Peninsula Transportation Coalition was, what our goal was, and um, to try to encourage each of the municipalities to establish and start to begin running a bus service within their municipality. And so we essentially called out the, the issues that we have in all over the county, Southern and Northern Door, um, that everyone, that certainly everyone knows about um, and are, are exist in, in most rural communities throughout the, throughout the country, actually. And then also as part of that presentation, I also um, outlined what um, the village of Sister Bay did in creating their shuttle bus system. Um, that system was, that, that shuttle bus service was created in 2019. And um, I, unfortunately, because of, because of COVID, we were unable to continue it for 2020, but it came back into service in 2021. Um, and we worked with the ADRC, we purchased one of their buses, we created a fixed route just throughout Sister Bay and, and ran it, as I said, in 2019 and 20, because of COVID, we could not. It was back in, a, we put it back into service in 21. Uh, the numbers for 21, for the second and third quarter, we drove 3,000 people. And again, this, this just rides, it, uh, it only, it only uh, runs on Friday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings from 5 p.m. until two o'clock in the morning. And we essentially cover um, the Highway 42 and you know, a little bit off of Highway 42. And we go to lodging and dining locations. Um, fourth quarter, ironically, in 2021, the ridership was 2,650 people. And that was at Fall Festival, we carried 1,100 people in a day. And also on that day, um, Bailey's Harbor, a great partner of ours, rented two um, school buses that went back and forth between Bailey's Harbor and Sister Bay, and they carried 800 people, so almost 2,000 people. Um, during Chris Kendall Market, if not, if you weren't if you were unfamiliar, um, the Sister Bay Historical Society ran Chris Kendall Market for three weekends in late November and early December, um, and we were very thankful and happy to provide transportation for that. It was a park and ride and we carried 1300 people. And that's, um, they, had, they also engaged on uh, the Door County Trolley uh, that carried far more than we did because their capacity and the number of people they can carry was bigger. And um, also on New Year's Eve, we carried 250 people. So for the fourth quarter, we carried 2,650 people. So you can, as you can tell, for the fourth quarter, that was really driven by um, more tourism than anything else. Although there were quite a few locals on those, on those rides. I know that because I drove for a number of those shifts. Um, and uh, and then in, in Q2 and Q3, um, we drive, you know, we drive locals and we also drive um, visitors. 
So my mission, our mission at the Peninsula Transit Coalition is to continue, this is for 22, continue to, to speak with each of the individual um, community boards to encourage municipal boards, to encourage them to invest in transportation in their communities. Ideally, what we would like to do is um, have a community hook up to ours, to our, our, uh, our shuttle bus, so that we can then provide uh, intra-village, for lack of a better, intra-community um, transportation, which would ultimately roll out to you know, transportation for the for the whole for the whole uh, peninsula, um, and I will say that uh, that our re the reception we received at the municipal level was warm. It, they were very nice. Um, however, no one invested in a in a um, in transportation, so the capex would be the bus, right? And so uh, it doesn't mean though that there is isn't still a lot of interest. It's just a matter of uh, what those municipal boards want to spend money on. Um, I will say that, you know, in noticing on it, who's attending, I'm very glad, Dane, that you're here from Rep Representative Gallagher's office, because I just wanted to let you know that I think most of the people on this call would consider transportation a huge part of infrastructure in Door County, and not necessarily paving roads, but having transportation on our roads, and having transportation on our roads that we can get help get funding for. Um, so, you know, just a, a quick shout out or request that, that that Representative Gallagher think about that in our community because it's money. Yes, of course. And with the passage of the recent bipartisan infrastructure bill, there's gonna be tons of transit grants out there. So if there's any help that you all need in finding grants, accessing grants or writing letters or, and we're happy to give letters of support too. So any help needed, contact our office and I'll be happy to help you all out. Great, thank you. Um, well, on that note, I will tell you that I have good news. Um, the Village of Sister Bay applied for and received a CMAC grant. So let me explain to you what that is. Yeah, we're excited. We just found out. I'm gonna have to read to you what it is because it's lengthy, not lengthy, but CMAC is a reimbursement program administered by the Wisconsin Department of Transportation that assists local agency with projects that improve air quality and reduce congestion, congestion through bicycle and pedestrian traffic flow, also public transit projects in Wisconsin's non-attainment and maintenance areas by paying a percentage of eligible project costs. So the village received $45,520 in federal funding. So we're very excited about this. It's an 80-20 grant uh, and the village stepped up. We went to them, we, the PTC went to them Asked them if they would if they would sponsor it. Um, someone wrote the grant for us, who has um, a lot of deep experience in in grant writing and in transportation. Um, so now uh, we're, the, the process is to wait to hear back from Wisdot, and then hopefully we can put that get that bus and put it into service as soon as possible. Um, and with that, we think that that will also not just raise awareness that other communities could go out and get grants as we did. Um, but also that, um, you know, there's maybe, you know, that, that they would they would consider, I, I have to say, I don't know that I would give them our bus. Our, our little bus has 170,000 miles on it because we have a lot of mechanical issues with it. So, it, you know, it's like selling, you know, your mom, your car, when you know it's going to break down as soon as she drives it. It's not a good idea. So, however, it could be a backup or something. So we're very excited about that. Um, and you know more on that a little bit later, but um, as as we progress, and we are going to put it into service. Uh, the bus goes into service on Memorial Day. It'll go through the end uh, through Labor Day, um, and then just weekends. Although it's really just weekends it's for September and October, um, we will help Chris Kindle again. Um, I mean, they had they had ten thousand people. We think roughly attend Chris Kindle, which is unbelievable. Um, and just mitigating, you know, mitigating just the traffic and everything else, the buses helped, right? Um, so, and the other thing too to think about is in terms of trans transportation, the CMAC grant. Um, the CMAC grant is only granted, um, it, it's, uh, it's granted to two, two areas in the state. And the area in the state that normally gets it is the area that generates the most pollution. And that would be um, Milwaukee and or Madison. And the reason that we are eligible for it is that pollution, you know, makes its way up here. 
And so, you know, we are, we're the, the not so great beneficiaries of that. And that's why we got it. And so that's not going to stop. So the other way to think about public transportation is, you know, our footprints and what we're doing. Um, I do know that, it's, and this will be an interesting thing to look at, the Peninsula Pulse, um, their, their philanthropy issue um, this year will be on, um, which will be very interesting, will be on, um, not philanthropy, I'm sorry, um, their, their issue on, on green will be, the sustainability issue will be on transportation, meaning um, how do we get around? How do we get around? And so, and what kind of footprint does that put on our community, on our, you know, in, in the water and the skies and things like that. So anyway, I've talked too much. I usually do. So uh, that's the scoop. That's what we're doing. Um, so we'll be back in your communities to talk to your municipal boards about um, stepping up and thinking about providing transportation and are here to give them any information they want. We gave them all our P&Ls. We gave them everything. We told them exactly what to do, how to do it. Told them that we'd, we'd help them with every everything. So all we need is one community, just one to hook up with Sister Bay. And then I think we'd reach a tipping point and we could start this process. So any questions from anybody? Congratulations, Louise. Yeah, we're excited. Be fun. Yep, finally a bus that's new and works. Yay. All righty, thank you, Louise. Next up is gonna be Pam Bush talking to us about the public transit system. Good morning, everybody. Um, so first off, I wanna say thank you to Dortrans staff and volunteers um, for keeping everybody moving through the pandemic. It's really nice to hear um, the stories from um, the folks that spoke earlier and um, share the links to those videos those to all the attendees. I'd love to watch them. I think Jean was on Let's Go Door County. Um, so kudos to all of you and thank you for everything that you do every day. Um, so the county's transportation um, department is relatively new. Um, it used to be um, with the human services department. Now the county has um, a sole department um, to watch over the transportation services. Um, our two services are under an umbrella called Door County Public Transit, um, Door County Connect Public Transit. One service many of you are aware of started in um, 2010, that's door-to-door -door rides. Um, it is almost countywide. It provides service um, from North Port Pier to the Southern Door border, so everywhere except for the island. Um, as I think Nikki or Kim mentioned earlier, there are more limited hours in some areas um, for door-to-door. -door. So a lot of what I do is work with people to, to um, kind of talk about what service they need, times, costs, and things like that. Um, at peak times during the week, door-to-door -door has up to eight vehicles on the road at one time. Um, we contract with Abbey Vans, their total fleet, um, is two ambulatory, meaning up to seven passenger vehicles and then six wheelchair accessible. So they can transport up to three people. The other um, service that the county um, provides is directly provided by the county um, staff. We operate out of the ADRC. Um, it is now called Door County Connect. We have a um, bus that is wheelchair accessible in addition to a van that is wheelchair accessible. Um, we do loan out our van to Dortran. We've been doing that now, I think since 2011 um, to provide no cost transportation to veterans. It's on the road right now. So um, that's awesome. The combined trips, as far as just a, a feel of what the pandemic's done, as far as ridership and things, obviously it's down. We were fortunate to receive CARES Act money to recoup some of that lost revenue and rider fares. So pre-pandemic 2019, um, both of the programs, Door to Door Rides and Door County Connect provided just over 40, 47,000 trips. 2020 um, reduced down to about 35,000 trips. And in 2021, we 
um, are up to 39,000. So again, we're still um, below about 8,000 trips, but at least our ridership is increasing. Um, just a note as well, we had discontinued shared rides. The door-to-door -door ride system is a shared ride taxi. It's a public transit system rather than having a set um, bus schedule or something like that. It goes to the person's residence, but it can also pick up other riders so that it operates efficiently. Um, we had discontinued the shared rides, which we will resume this Friday, April 1st. So just an FYI on that. Um, masking um, will continue until April 18th. Because we're public transit, we do need to follow the FTA masking guidelines, um, which recently was extended to the 18th of April, and we'll see if there is another extension there. As far as 2021 accomplishments, um, again, we rebranded, so door-to-door -door rides and Door County Connect um, do look like um, related systems. So they both share the Door County Connect public transit logo. And then we renamed um, the ADR, ADRC bus, um, naming it Door County Connect to give more of a view that it is open to everyone. Um, primarily, we do provide transportation to individuals over 55 or with a disability, but anybody can ride the system. So we felt rebranding would be helpful for that. Um, we combine the website, so both Door-to-Door -door Rides and Door County Connect share a website now through the county's website system, and we also have a combined brochure. So a couple of those things were done in 2021. Another thing that the um, county's department started was a um, flexible route. We call it the connector link. Operates every Wednesday um, as much as possible. We do have... Um, the need for volunteer drivers. We also have the need for ridership um, to keep that system going. But the great thing about that, it also provides business buy-in. So the bus stops are at multi-resident locations, um, a lot of it apartment complexes that um, are high um, public transit users. And then we also have businesses that pay a fee annually to sponsor their bus stops. As far as 2022, again, I mentioned um, ridership is really needed to keep that connector link Wednesday service going. Um, so if any of you can help um, spread the word about that to ensure that people know it's out there, that would be wonderful. And then if there are any volunteers that would like to either drive that route um, part of the day or volunteer aides that help with the paperwork and things like that during the route. Um, but those are kind of our goals for 2022. Um, otherwise, everything is um, pretty much status quo for the year. I don't see any changes coming up in the near future. Thank you. Thank you, Pam, for those updates. We're going to go ahead and Kim and Kathy have some stuff to recognize at this time. People, things. I don't know who's going first. Thanks, Nikki. Um, we during this past year, um, we've lost a couple of board members um, who felt that the commitment at this point in time that they really had um, other issues that they needed to deal with. So Michael Moore and um, Linda Weisensell have left the board and Betsy Bear will be going off this year who was our NWTC um, connection. Uh, we were not able to in, get any help from NWTC as far as bringing on a new board member, but we have added Paula Weiss. Wave your hand, Paula. And then we will also be um, adding Megan, excuse me, Megan Welsh will be coming on the board this year as well. Betsy has been um, great for our board and has really helped with the fundraiser every year at the fun park. Um, but I know she has a lot of things to devote her time to and we'll continue to look for someone who will be an educational connection for our board. Kim. Okay. So for those of you who have been at our meetings in the past, you know we celebrate those drivers who have been with us for five years. Um, this year I'm proud to announce that we have five drivers that hit that mark. Keith Ninell, Vivian Ninell, Mike Skippon, Joe McMahon, and Howard Phipps. 
as if five years isn't a big enough milestone, we have four volunteers that we celebrate for having driven for 10 years. That's Dick Johnson, who is on the road today with that vet program, Mike Finesse, Stan Whiteman, and Linda Moore. Um, their dedication to Dortran over the past 10 years is what helps keep this program a proven success. Working with each of them has truly been my pleasure. And as long as we're talking about volunteers, it's just a reminder, we have Barb in our office. Wave Barb, say hi. So we love Barb. She comes in and she's amazing. And we thank her for all our help. Um, I also kind of close out with a call to action for each of you in order to expand our outreach into the community. I ask that each of you remember to visit our website, like our Facebook page, share our posts, and share what you've heard here today. Help us to reach out into the community and help us with getting people where they need to go. Thank you. And Ellen, I forgot you came on the board this year. Looking right at your picture, um, Ellen is on the island. And um, oh. yeah, <laughs> so we're delighted to have Ellen too representing the island. I have. I'm excited to do it. I'm. And I'm also, um, I think this meeting has really helped me kind of, I'm not capsulize, but at least put some more things in place that I'm able to maybe take back to the community. So thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. I think it takes a while to realize the, the hugeness of transportation and how it impacts our community. Um, another new board member last year replacing Ken Glasheen from Sunshine Resources is Jeremy Pazcheck from Sunshine Resources also. He's not on the call today, but he, he was a new addition this past year. Um, just a lot of turnover. So I think this has just been very challenging for everyone. So um, I'm gonna close out with, I, I cherish every moment that I'm given to serve my community, whatever that looks like in my role here or, or outside of these walls. Um, it's my hope to continue to do so here at Dortran um, and to focus more on our mission, not just survival. <laughs> um, I'd also like to take this opportunity to let you know a few ways that you can help Dortran by doing things you're typically doing anyway. Uh, mark your calendars for the months of July and August. Doorstop Amico's Community Pump number six will be ours. Um, we had an unfortunate storm the week that we were at Culver's in February. Um, plus we shared the week with the Bredo family who lost their home and their shed to a fire. Um, so we've been invited back in September on the 27th. So we're hoping for better weather. Um, Toddix Marketplace continues to give us 1% back on their purchases of your receipts. So you can drop those off at the office anytime. Um, always looking for volunteers for different events. So you can let us know if you're interested in more. And we're still pump number five through Thursday at the BP Jandu uh, Petroleum 8 on the corner of 3rd and Michigan. So if you pump up there, we get two cents for every gallon. You got like five and, minutes. And it's still at $3.99. We about five morning. minutes and then we're going to turn it off. Um, thank you all for coming and don't forget to refer to us as needed and continue supporting us in all the ways mentioned on, okay. today. And thank you all for your contributions to transportation and getting people where they need to go. Uh, at this time, if there is any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to bring them up. Anybody have anything to add? Thank you, Nikki, Kim, Sorry. and Yvonne. Thank and you Mark. all for Nikki. coming today. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Yvonne. Thank yes, you, Nikki. Thank you. Thanks for everything you do, Nikki. That you guys do, Nikki. Thank you. Thanks.